Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best MEDC, and today I would like to talk to you about totally customizing and decking out your knives, and one of the easiest ways to do that, which is Flytanium. They're probably now one of the biggest and most well-known knife scale manufacturers, and uh, they're slaying it. There's, there's just so many options now. It's really, really great because you can buy the knife you like and then turn it into what you may think is the perfect knife, which is really cool. So with that said, this is how you fully deck out a knife with Flytanium, and let's do the damn thing. Okay, so on the table, we have four sets of scales from Flytanium. They also sent a brand new Paramilitary 2 in S45VN. So we're gonna put one of these sets of scales on it. They also sent a full bronze titanium hardware kit, also for PM2. A titanium backspacer, also bronze, for a Paramilitary 2. And they sent a shirt and a whole bunch of stickers. Uh, and as you can see, one of these knives is already put together. This is my bug out 535-5. I took off the carbon fiber scales and put the titanium on it. So this is what you can expect from a flytanium knife with a set of scales on just a, a standard knife. Nothing else has changed on this, just the scales. This particular version of the bug out actually has a backspacer where normally with a bug out, it's built into the scales. The 535-5, the carbon fiber version, has an aluminum backspacer. So it was a little weird, but we're gonna actually put the OD green scales that I have on this knife, which already has OD green scales, but I like these more. These are the crossfade in G10, and these are also G10, but they're the ones that came on this exclusive version. So we're gonna swap those out, show you that process. But we're gonna get started with the, the PM2 because there's just so much. It's a full kit for the PM2, almost a full kit. So the one thing that, that Flytanium doesn't do is, is deep carry clips or milled clips or clips of any sort, to my knowledge. So we're gonna steal a clip off of another PM2 and deck this one out with a Rips Garage Tech milled clip. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, do we go brass or micarta? I think we go micarta. Brass is cool. I actually had these on this PM2 for a few days and brass is really cool, but it's heavy. And I just love that patina. So, and I think since we have all bronze hardware that this will look better all with the, the OD green, the bronze titanium hardware with brass kind of looks a little funky. Not bad, it doesn't look bad at all, but just a little weird. We need some tools here. Oh, and we'll, uh, we'll put a bead and a lanyard on it too, just for good measure. So for starters, we need to get the clip off. That is a T6, the PM2 in particular uh, can be tricky to get apart because it, while it is a very straightforward construction, uh, things like the lanyard tube and free spinning body screws can really, really give you some trouble. So you've got the biggest thing I hate, hate about the paramilitary two is that everything is a different size. So you have a T9, I believe, T9 for the, the pivot screw. All right, so you run that out with a T9 and then your body screws are T8s. Why, Spyderco? I love you. I, I do. This is just one of those things. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that is actually corrected. Another reason to go with a full TI kit. I think all of these are the same size. So you can get rid of that T9, which the only knife I ever use a T9 on is the Paramilitary 2. And then in the handle here, we got a T8. So we can do our body screws. This one. Oh yeah, cool new little... Uh, driver from combat beads, you got bit storage in the handle. It's really sick. So with the PM2, in my experience, this set of screws will not give you a hard time, even though it's technically free spinning. I say that as it starts spinning on me. Okay, Let's see what you're doing to me this time, universe. Can't speak nicely about anything, can I? It always comes back to bite me. If you are having trouble with these uh, free spinning body screws. I got a little trick for you, but first we got to get past this lanyard tube. This is one of the worst parts about the paramilitary too. And you do get a spare one when you get the full hardware kit. So you can get rid of this 
Um, these tolerances for these lanyard tubes are ridiculous. So you can pop one out, but then getting the second one out can be really tough sometimes. Getting it out of the hole is usually easier than getting it back in. I had to hammer on this thing a little earlier today just to get it back in there. And it's not easy. It's not that it's stuck in the liner. The liner is actually really loose on the tube. It's the scales. They're just so tight. It's basically press fit. Two hours later. One eternity later. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. I have to slowly work it out. There we go. Lanyard tube out. So this comes to a little trick I was telling you guys about. I always use the underside of my lanyard cord, hold the pivot or the, the body screw, or the standoff rather, hold that tight and you can uh, run the screw out. Took me a while to figure that one out, uh, but that is just a handy little tip that will get you out of a bind, especially with these uh, Spyderco knives. Not gonna do any cleaning on these because I literally took this thing apart like two hours ago. So you do need the pivot, but all the standoffs and all the screws can go away. Now, the interesting thing, if you've never taken a Spyderco knife apart, the interesting part about the construction is that you have, well, there's a flat spotted side on the pivot, so it is directional, but your pivot holds the washer in place. You have to put the washer on before you start screwing the pivot on because it's held in place. Okay, so now we put this other lanyard tube in here, but from my own experience, most aftermarket lanyard tubes or even aftermarket scales have slightly bigger holes so the tubes can free spin. The downside to that is that sometimes they might rattle, but they seem to fit in here okay. But we also have, I'll just cut through that sticker. Uh, we also have this backspacer, which works with the lanyard tube, I guess. It's kind of what holds it in place. Hopefully, I don't know if it's gonna keep it from rattling. I've had one that did rattle, but we were also working with uh, totally different hardware sets. These are all from the same place. Uh, I probably should just add a dab of lube just for good measure, just a little bit. That's more than I wanted. You're on the home stretch, folks. Much, much easier with this aftermarket hardware, if I'm gonna be honest. As you can see, all I have here is this standard clip. I genuinely do not like the stock Spyderco clip, so I'm gonna steal this one right here. So when it comes to aftermarket clips, you have several different options. This one right here comes from Rips Garage Tech, but you have Lynch Northwest, there's MXG gear, and I'm sure several others that I'm not super familiar with, but I like this milled clip a lot. And we're gonna use these bronze screws so that all of the hardware on this knife is titanium. They may actually be too short to work with this milled clip. That's a bummer. That's a serious bummer. We're gonna have to use these screws because the milled clip is just a little too thick. Those uh, aftermarket screws are really short. That sucks. Dang. So I'd have to go with the standard clip and the bronze hardware or this milled clip with the OEM screws. I much prefer to look at the milled clip over the OEM clip. There you have it. That, wait, 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 wait. Almost forgot. It's not complete without a bead and a lanyard. So there you have it. That is a fully kitted PM2 with titanium hardware. So we have all titanium hardware, as far as screws, even the backspacer and the standoffs, um, the lanyard tube, all titanium from Flytanium. And then we have the Lotus OD Green Micarta scales, 
They also sent me these Lotus bronze scales, which I told you I put on here. Uh, also really, really nice to be completely honest, but everything about this feels so good. It's super lightweight. This right here is, this is a killer PM2. But that's the PM2. Let's do the bug out really quickly. Okay, so pretty much the same deal with this one. Let me get the uh, lanyard taken off this. Yes, I always save my lanyards. I don't ever cut them. I just keep the qu same cord. I love how it looks after it gets really gnarly. So same deal with this knife. You're just gonna take it apart and swap the scales onto it. So this one's not really a full hardware swap. It's just gonna be scale swapping, but scale swapping the bug out can be pretty tricky because of the Omega Springs. But let's just get to it. Stop talking. Well, that's how you take it apart. It's just, it falls apart. It'd be nice to just pop one on and then switch over to the other side, but you can't do that, unfortunately. Uh, and I'll show you why. But what I've learned over the years is it does make it a little easier if you pop one side off and then attach the scale to the liner. Okay, so just a little pro tip here. So this side cannot come off because of the pivot. So you can push the pivot out, get some of that pressure off of it. Once you get this pivot out, you can pop this scale off, put the other one on. Now things do slide around, but the idea is to not have to take apart the entire knife uh, because of the way that this is constructed, but I have lost it. So none of it matters. I got to do it anyway. You just kind of have to work the washers in. And this may not be the easiest way to do that. I'll be the first one to admit it, but it's what I've always done. So you can see on the back side, I've lined that washer up. On this top side, I've yet to do that. You just have to kind of create some space and let it drop down in there. So the easiest thing, this first washer in there and then use the pivot to line everything. So I have the blade and one washer and then the trick is getting this second washer right there. there go. Now you just got to get a little bite on it. And that's usually the tricky part. There we go. All right, now we're cooking with fire. I will say that I struggle with this a lot less than I used to. The bug out is definitely one of the, not difficult, but just frustratingly tedious knives to take apart and put together. And it's all because of the Omega Springs. As you noticed, I didn't touch those Omega Springs at all. Um, they're not awful to try and get back together, but they're definitely Knives that are a whole lot easier to work on. Ooh, snappy. There we go. I like this much more than these weird, like, I don't even know what that texture is, but I, I guess it's like the original bug out. Maybe, I don't even remember what the original bug out was like. Uh, these, these are called crossfades from Flytanium. I like that a lot better. Don't forget, crucial step, put your lanyard bead on. Uh, so here we have it, there are four knives from Flytanium that we've either scale swapped or fully kitted out. Um, this one is the fully kitted, the PM2 with the OD green scales. This, uh, this thing is definitely my favorite of the bunch. This one's also sweet, the Lotus brass scales on the PM2 with, uh, I have this acid etch blade that I've had for ages with blasted hardware. So a lot of this stuff is uh, stuff that I've already had, but I threw on a blast, a blast, a brass backspacer that I already had with a brass lanyard tube. So this is all the brass goodness from Flytanium and a PM2. This one is the 535-5 with the titanium crossfade scales. This thing's sick. We also have the OD Green G10 crossfade scales on my uh, Smoky Mountain Knifeworks exclusive M4 bug out with the, the tan blade. So these are not the only two knife models that Flytania makes scales for. 
They make scales for a bunch of different knives, a lot of Benchmades, a lot of Spydercos, and many, many more. And your, and your pricing on them does vary quite a bit. So just for the record on this one right here, the Paramilitary 2, this is the S45 VN version. This is about $154. Uh, the scales on this one, the OD Micarta Lotus scales are gonna set you back $49. All titanium bronzed hardware, that whole kit is gonna be about 45 more dollars. And then you have the bronze titanium backspacer, that's $23. So this whole kit minus the clip will set you back $271. So quite a bit more than the original PM2, but you've got you know exactly the knife you want in this, you know, give or take. Not everybody wants an OD my card here too. Uh, but this PM2 with just the brass scales, those brass scales are 72 bucks. So these are a little bit more expensive. So this kit, if you wanted uh, just a standard PM2 with the brass scales would set you back about $226. And then this one, of course, I threw that backspacer on, which is another like 25. So you can do the math there, about 250 bucks for this one. And then these bug out scales, you've got both of these cross fades. Your titanium are gonna be about $64 and the G10 are 39. So just add that to the, the price of a base bug out uh, and you can have your full pricing there. But there you go. Those are some of the offerings, just a small, small fraction of the offerings from Flytanium. With all that said, if you are interested in checking out what Flytanium has to offer, just hit the link in the description down below. Those are affiliate links, so I do get a little bit of a kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra, uh, but they've got stuff for tons of different knives. Um, if you've got a fairly mainstream knife, they might have scales for you like Civivi Elementum. You've got all sorts of different Spyderco knives like the Manix, um, the Para 3, all sorts of different options there. So go check it out in the links down below. But that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.